Hi, it's Karen at the Cool Tool Studio, and I'm going to demonstrate how to apply accent gold for silver to fired fine silver clay. So these pieces have been fired, and they've been prepared to receive the accent gold for silver. And there's two ways you can finish them. Um, you can bring them to a pickle white, which is what I did for this piece. And when it came out of the aluminum hydrate, there was a little bit of an orangish tint to it. And so what I did was I just gently heated it with a torch from far away, and then. I quenched it and then I put it in my pickle and that brought it up to this nice white finish. You can also just hit these pieces with a radial disc on a flex shaft and that's what I did with this piece and why it's got a little more of a silver finish on the face there. So these pieces are all ready to go to receive the gold. Let's take a look at what we're going to need for this portion of the project. To apply the accent gold, you're going to need something to heat your pieces in. You can do this in the kiln, but today I'm going to show you with a torch. So you need an annealing pan and then a brick. I like the honeycomb because it helps you distribute the heat and keep from melting anything. Some crosslock tweezers are helpful as well. A big shot torch. And then some sort of dish with some distilled water. I have my accent gold and it comes with some glycerin, a pipette, a brush, a palette knife, an ultra clay pick, some tweezers, and an assortment of burnishers. So we're going to start off by mixing the accent gold to the proper consistency. And in the instructions, it recommends tapping it a couple times before you open it to try to get as much at the bottom as you can. And it's a powder right now. So we're going to be adding glycerin and water until it's the correct consistency. And the instructions say to do 12 drops of water and 4 drops of glycerin. So I'm going to drop some water. Ten, eleven, twelve. And right now it's just kind of beating off to the side, so we're going to have to spend some time mixing things. We're going to add four drops of glycerin. Two, three, and four. And I'm going to be using my palette knife to mix. Should come out to the edges. And we're going to mix this until we get a smooth, creamy consistency. It's supposed to look paint like. And it really kind of wants to beat up and separate, so make sure you spend a lot of time getting through and across to integrate things. So I'm going to spend some time mixing, and then I'll check back in, and we can talk about what it should look like when it's ready to go. So it's probably been about three minutes, and I'm finally happy with the consistency here. It was weird. There was kind of this moment where it went from all floating on the surface to finally incorporating and integrating. And it's much darker in appearance now, and it's not runny, so I think we're at a good place. So we're ready to apply this to our piece. And I'm working on the surface as a note because when the gold dries on it, you can just brush it off and reclaim every bit of this gold. Same with the palette knife. It'll clean up really easily. So I like to start by painting the sides and then coming back and doing the top faces. And I just find that it's easier to not disturb your nice even top coat trying to do the sides when you start on the sides. And as a side note, I also like applying this gold to fired pieces because if you accidentally get some on the moon, which I'm sure I'll do very soon, you can just come in with the clay pick once it's dry and kind of nudge it away. And it's an easy way to clean it up. And 
So it depends on how you paint, but what you're shooting for is about the thickness of two pieces of paper. And you might do that in one coat or you might do it in two coats. but you don't want to be able to see the silver through. And I kind of find that a dabbing motion works really well for applying the gold to this top face. And I have some distilled water over here. By the way, it was distilled water that was mixed in um, to rinse out my brush. And again, I will let all that dry out and then reclaim every bit of this gold. But if your brush gets a little too chunky or has too much on it, you can thin things out. And there's some silver showing, so I'm gonna come back. Just dab a bit more on, all right. So it looks good. I'm going to move on and keep painting gold on all of these stars. So I've painted my moon and now I'm painting the bale and I'm just using these tweezers to help me support my piece without getting gold paint all over my fingers. And once this is dry, you can either paint on another coat if you can see silver through, I think it needs it or you can move along to firing it. And you can kind of see there's a color difference between wet and dry. Um, so I'm gonna allow both of these pieces to get nice and dry, and then we're gonna use a torch to fire on the gold. So these are nice and dry and ready to fire, and if this piece isn't staying upright on its own, you can use these self-closing tweezers to support it but mine looks like it's gonna be okay. So I have a big shot torch here, and that's gonna be great for the heat on this piece, but make sure you don't overheat this piece. It's very small and it's much more likely to melt. So I'm actually gonna scoot my pieces a little further away so I have some distance in between them. And get my torch going. And I'm going to start with the little guy, so I'm going to dial down that heat. And you can always bring it back up if you need to. And what I'm going to be looking for is the gold to be glowing a bright salmon, or the gold to be glowing a bright orange, rather, and then the silver will be a salmon. And when it gets to that look, you're going to hold it anywhere from 30 seconds to 2 minutes. And on a little piece like this, you can probably go to the lower range of that time frame. But for the bigger one, the heat's probably going to need to be on for a while. I'm going to kind of rotate, make sure that I'm heating all of the piece. That looks good. So I'm going to hop over to my moon. And there's that salmon and orange. So we're gonna try to maintain this, and that's gonna be a little bit of dancing with the torch, kind of backing off when it's getting too hot and coming back in when it looks like it's cooling down. We're gonna try to maintain this for about two minutes. So these have cooled, and I'm ready to burnish down the gold. And I can tell that there are some little corners and points that there's a little bit of silver showing and that's okay once you're done burnishing if that's still visible you can go ahead and add a second coat and fire that on just as you did the first so i have an assortment of burnishers and it's just kind of going to be a matter of which tool gets the job done the best way and this wide one's good for nice top faces You can see how it's starting to shine up. Alternately, there's this nice agate burnisher, and you can use that on that face as well. 
And that's also really good for the corners and faces. The corners and side faces, rather. And then you can also use a ball burnisher for those sides, if that works well for you. So I like the way that this one was working best so far, so I'm going to go back to it for the top faces. And you want to do this first. At this point, if you were to chuck this in a tumbler, it wouldn't turn out very well. So you want to really compress this gold down. So it's going to take some time, but it's definitely worth it. It's a really economical way to add gold accents to your piece. And briefly, I'm going to set this guy aside and show you that when I'm burnishing this guy, I like to use the tweezers to kind of support it and hold it. And that gives you something to work against and more to grip than the tiny little finding there. So I'm just going to keep burnishing and we'll check back in and see how these guys are looking and if we need another coat. I'm mostly done here. This agate burnisher has worked really well for these sides. But I've noticed that there are some places where I can still see some silver through. And that just means my coat wasn't quite thick enough. So I'm going to do another one. I like to do it this way because if you put on too much gold at once, it won't fuse properly. And I like to just build it up slowly. So I'm going to apply another coat, just as I did the first, and then fire it on. And we'll see how nice and brilliant the gold is when it's thick enough. So I burnished down my gold, and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Once you've burnished your gold, this can go in the tumbler, just like any other piece of finished metal clay jewelry. I'm going to show you how to attach the bale to the pendant with the jump ring. I have some chain nose pliers here, and they have a nice fine tip on them, and they're really, really wonderful, especially when you're working this small. So I'm gonna open my jump ring to the side. If you pull it out, you'll distort that perfect little circle shape. And I'm gonna start by going through the back of my pendant. And then once that's hanging there, I'm going to make sure my bale is facing the right side. The star has gone the out. And then this is kind of awkward. Sometimes it helps to set it down. That way, this guy is nice and far away from your piece. And you're going to thread the jump ring through the connecting hook on your um, bale there. And then you're gonna have to close it. So I'm actually going to kind of scoot to the end of my jump ring here. So I have some more room to work on this end. Now it's just a matter of closing. So you always go a little bit past when you're closing a jump ring, that way it'll kind of spring back. All right. So these pieces are now joined and the pendant has some really nice movement to it. It can swing freely side to side and I like that. This piece is ready to tumble and that's gonna shine it right up. Here's my piece tumbled and I think it looks great. I love the gold accents on this piece. I think it really makes it pop. But if gold isn't quite your thing, you can also do this project in all silver. And I think it looks nice too. In this one, I added a pattern to the background for some visual interest. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you feel like you can give Accent Gold for Silver a try. It's a lot of fun and it's a really economical way to add gold to your projects. Thanks for watching. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.